Hi everyone, welcome to Storytime. I have some amazing books picked out for you today. Before we get started, we are going to start with the shake break. So everyone stand up. You've been are you guys ready? I hope you haven't been on the couch all day. Okay. You guys ready? Stand up. Are you ready? We are going to get started. Our first book is Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug by Jonathan Stutzman. Hello, Pointy. Are you okay? No. Today I feel sad and I don't want to play. I have tiny arms. It is very difficult to hug with tiny arms. Each day I'm growing taller, but my arms are still tiny. Hugging almost seems impossible for a Rex as tiny as me, but I will try anyway. Pointy needs a hug. Where is my father? I will ask him for advice. Hello, Father. Rexes are thinkers, not huggers. Perhaps instead of hugs, mathematics might be the answer to your problem. Pointy does not like math. Math will only make Pointy feel worse. Hello, Auntie Judith. I have a problem. I must learn how to hug, but my arms are too tiny. I have found that balance is the key to every problem. Balance and freshly squeezed cucumber juice. That is disgusting. I will ask my mother for help instead. I have fallen and now I am lost. I do not think I will find my mother in here. Oh. Hello, Mother! It's okay if you can't hug, Tiny. You are good at many other things. You are kind and creative and braver than most. You are tiny, but your heart is big. I cannot hug with my heart, Mother. I must learn to hug with my arms. Hello, sister. Hello, brother. Please help me. Hugging is very difficult. We'd love to help, Tiny. To do the impossible, you must plan and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Thank you, Trixie and Rory. That was good advice. I will plan my strategy. I will get stronger. I will practice very hard. I will practice my hugs on everything. I will not practice on that anymore. I am almost ready. I will practice one more time. When I am done, I will find my friend. This tree is very big, like pointy. I will hug it. 
This is not a tree. I've made a mistake. Please help. From up here, everything looks so tiny like me. I could hug. I could hug anything I wanted. Oh no, now I'm falling. I should not have let go. Now I will never find Pointy. I am here to make you feel better. I have practiced very hard and hugged many things. My arms are still tiny and my hugs are still tiny, but I will do my very best because you are my very best friend. Thank you, Tiny. That was the biggest hug ever. The end. I hope you liked that. Our next book is titled No Hugs for Porcupine by Zoe Waring. Poor Porcupine couldn't be hugged. The forest animals who loved hugging each other twittered behind Porcupine's back. He's too prickly, said Fawn. He's so grumpy, said Rabbit. Moose, Fox, Beaver, and Owl agreed. Who could ever hug a porcupine, exclaimed Otter. I don't need a hug from any of you, porcupine shouted into the echoing forest. But he wanted one. It was no hugs that made Porcupine grumpy. He craved a cuddle, needed a nuzzle, and searched for a snuggle. Dusk crept over the forest. All the animals said their good nights, giving each other warm bedtime hugs before they returned to their burrows, nests, and logs. All but Porcupine. He sold off to his corner of the forest and settled on his rock. Giving his quills a quick shake, he tried to wrap his little arms around his body. Ouch, he cried. Even Porcupine couldn't hug Porcupine. He felt extra grumpy. Porcupine picked up one of his quills from the mossy ground. Perhaps I can do something about these, he thought. He tried shaking again, Harder this time, only a few quills fell off. He tried rubbing his back against a tree to blunt the spikes, but his quills were sharp as ever. Maybe I can cover myself in moss. Porcupine gathered the softest moss he could find. He lumbered over to the brook and peered at his reflection. You look silly, said a voice. Porcupine turned and spotted Armadillo. He dropped the moss to the ground. That's much better, said Armadillo. It's not much better, said Porcupine, grumpier than before. I won't ever get a hug now. Cheer up, Porcupine, said Armadillo. Would you like a kiss instead? A kiss? What's a kiss? May I have one, please? Asked Porcupine. <sighs> Armadillo pecked a quick kiss on Porcupine's little nose. There, that's a kiss. Porcupine felt happy and warm and not the least bit grumpy. He wanted to show all the forest animals this kiss, but was afraid they would not give him a chance. Don't worry, said Armadillo, we can show them together. Okay, mumbled Porcupine nervous, nervously, and they made their way back through the forest.
Where did you go, porcupine? The animals cried, we've missed you. I was sad, porcupine muttered, because you said I couldn't be hugged. It's not that we don't want to hug you, said Fawn. We're just afraid of your prickly quills. Armadillo said, well, in that case, porcupine could give you a kiss if you want, because porcupine kisses are not prickly. A kiss, said Rabbit, twitching his nose. May I have one, please, said Otter, bounding up to porcupine. Sure, said porcupine. Mwah. That wasn't prickly at all, said Otter. In fact, it was very nice. Porcupine smiled. I want to kiss too, whispered Fawn. So do I, said Rabbit. All the forest animals asked Porcupine if they could also have a kiss. So he very carefully planted pecks, kissed cheeks, and nudged noses. Dawn broke over the forest. All the animals said their good mornings, giving each other quick, sweet kisses after rising from their burrows, nests, and logs. All the poor owl. Our last book for today is titled, Well, We Can't Hug by Ian McLaughlin. Hedgehog and Tortoise were the best of friends. They wanted to give each other a great big hug, but they weren't allowed to touch. Don't worry, said Owl. There are lots of ways to show someone you love them. Hedgehog tried to wave. That made Tortoise smile. Tortoise made a funny face. That made Hedgehog laugh. Hedgehog wrote a letter and Tortoise wrote one back. And when Tortoise did a little dance, Hedgehog joined in too. Hedgehog blew a kiss across the gap between them. Tortoise saw it and caught it and kept it. And sent three back again. Tortoise sang a song, Hedgehog played, a, played along. Then they both painted pictures so that everyone would know they were friends. Through rain, sunshine, they could not touch, they could not hug. But they both knew that they were loved. The end. So we are going to do one more song. We are going to do the shake. We are going to actually do shake your sillies out. Are you, so I'm going to have you stand up. Are you guys ready? From the award-winning CD, Country Songs and Dance. You ready? Everyone stand up. Stretch, 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 stretch
You ready? She got the thing. You all did so awesome. I hope you enjoyed the stories today. I had so much fun reading them to you. We'll see you next time. Bye.